53, um, 65, um, 80, and then all these. I think they add up to like, uh, yeah. So it's quite a lot of videos. And I think between all of them, I do cover everything that I felt like we should cover um, cover this week. So. So it's all there um, that I guess you should have been watching throughout this week. Um, and one thing, the couple of things that I wanted to highlight that um, that I wanted to highlight because so many people miss it or underestimate their significance um, is one, it has to do with our sensation of force and uh, where those sensations actually come from. That's uh, really what this video is meant to illustrate, uh, the zero-g flight. You see uh, people on this airplane who, um, who you know, look like they are uh, feeling weightless and they do, um, um, they are kind of uh, weightless. Wait, just sing her. Yeah, so when you look at this video, then um, you can see that, yeah, they are just floating in the air. They are um, weightless. Now, um, I think this situation is great for demonstrating how feeling of weightlessness doesn't necessarily, it doesn't really connect with where there are being actually no gravity. Because these people are on plane um, in within the Earth's atmosphere. It's not in orbit. It's not far away from Earth. So that, there's definitely gravity in this situation. And the um, reason they are feeling weightless is because of the lack of contact forces. So usually when I'm like sitting down, I'm sitting on a chair and I, you know, feel my full weight. <laughs> the way I feel my weight is not me feeling gravity directly. It's that for me to stay in place here, there are support forces keeping me up. And it's those support forces that I feel. Um, and I go into that in more detail with the, the types of force lecture. I actually recorded this one uh, faster because it was a, a, something that there was a gap in. So, so that's one, um, the kind of the forces that we feel. We don't really feel gravity. Um, so, um, it's, and yeah, and, uh, and sometimes you see this in a terminology like apparent weight. If you look at our textbook, I think it does use the term apparent weight somewhere. <laughs> so, apparent weight. And, um, Yeah, I guess it comes super late. Um, so they mentioned it in chapter 13, but you should really know it before then. Uh, they call it um, mass the scale exerts an upward force. That's the uh, force from the scale, or this is what's similar to a normal force. In this case, it's a spring force, but it's a contact force, and we call it apparent weight. And it's one of the physics terminologies that you just have to learn that when we say the word weight, we mean gravitational force. And when we say apparent weight, we mean the normal force or the support forces that balance the gravitational force um, most of the time. So in this video, the apparent weight of the people would be zero. As they're floating, there's no normal force on them. So that's one thing I wanted to highlight. The second thing was um, the Newton's third law. And uh, yeah, examples of Newton's third law. I'll highlight the videos because Newton's third law is one of those that uh, I call it the most misunderstood law of Newton. And to tell you the truth, I think I've seen a couple times high school physics teachers who get it wrong, <laughs> or at least people who are applying for a high school physics teacher job. It's uh, something that it's tricky because I think. Uh, uh, this phrase gets so stuck in people's head that people just get this, uh, stuck with this equal and opposite. And it's like when you're running to ride a bicycle, you see a trash can and you keep thinking, you get fixated on that and you keep hitting that trash can. And with the Newton's third law, when it's stayed its way, people get so stuck on this that you make mistakes that basically comes from this. 
So um, in the Newton's law video that I have, um, we will uh, expand it out so that um, there is less of the misunderstanding. If so, it, Newton's third law is a law that that describes an interaction, interaction between two objects, and it uh, says something new about that interaction, uh, which is that as one object exerts a force on the other, there's a um, reaction force that the other object exerts back. And it gives you this inform, this has a new information that these two forces that are related through Newton's third law are equal in magnitude and opposite in directions. And I think for most people, they kind of uh, do this backward. <laughs> they look for forces that are equal in magnitude and opposite directions and associate them as action reaction force. It actually works the other way around, meaning um, first you identify two forces as being action reaction force pair. And then once you've done that, then um, then Newton's third law tells you that, oh, they must be equal in magnitude and opposite in directions. So I think I have one example here that you can do. Um, and <laughs> here's the um, question about figures from, um, okay, so looking at system one, free body diagram, is the normal force N, um, so is the normal force N a reaction force pair to weight W? And then I say, okay, write down your answer first and see if your answer is correct by reading through all figures there. So looking at this, so um, system one is this system here. And wait, uh, system one is the whole thing, it's the entire thing. And system two is the, this thing here. And I think uh, the question it's asking is relatively simple. You know, are these two equal and opposite forces, action reaction force pairs? And the answer is no. <laughs> and here's the one of the ways you can quickly tell. This is where I really do prefer the longer version. If an object A exerts a force on object B, there has to be two objects involved. When you are dealing with the normal force and weight, they are both on one object of the system one. So these two forces are acting on the same object, which means it fails this description right away. Well, so these two forces are not, um, I mean, they are equal and opposite, but being equal and opposite doesn't make them Newton's third law pairs. And that's what the answer here is describing. And, um, oh, but it says by contrast, read about the examples description of the force um, by foot and force on floor. Yeah, so this is an example here. So, um, so here, in terms of the free body diagrams, you don't have all the free body diagrams to actually spot the action reaction force pairs on the diagram, um, because I would need a free body diagram of the floor to be able to draw the, the reaction force. But you can look at this interaction here. The foot is pushing the floor back. That's what this F foot is labeling. The the woman's foot is pushing the floor backward. And in that interaction, the floor pushes the foot forward because the foot pushes the floor back, the floor pushes the foot forward. And this is, so these two are action reaction force pairs. And uh, once you recognize them as action reaction force pairs, then you can say that they're equal in magnitude and opposite in directions. So, so uh, watch the lecture. Uh, this is uh, one of the, the, for those of you who took my physics 10, this was basically my main thing to teach. And I have to tell you, um, again, this is the most common mistake that people make when they are, um, when people are learning Newton's laws. So if you think you know Newton's law, watch the video carefully, see if you are learning anything new. I guess if you're not learning anything new, then great, then you understood Newton's third law. <laughs> but in case you might not have, do watch the video. So um, those are the two big things. The rest are kind of covered in these, you know, hour and 30 minutes of videos. I'll leave you to wa watch it. Let me know of any questions. I do, oh, I love to answer. Um, follow up questions and that might lead to me making another video. I can definitely do that, but someone has to ask me, tell me what's confusing.